This is Tamara from mooglyblog.com, and in this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to crochet the Halloween Tentacle Candy Bowl, which is a free pattern on mooglyblog.com. Please go to the link in the description for links to both right and left-handed video tutorials, as well as the written pattern and all the supplies you need to make this fun object. Here you can see it is made with Bernat Blanket, two colors, but just one skein of each. I used white and this dusky blue, but you can choose whichever colors you like. I also used a USL seven millimeter hook. And as you can see, this makes a great big bowl, perfect for your Halloween candy. It's also got these fun tentacles that add a little extra stability and some more Halloween fun. This is a really simple pattern made primarily of half double crochets. So today I'm going to be demonstrating just the finer points, the trickier bits and the assembly. Now, as you can see, this bowl is made in three pieces, the inner bowl, the outer bowl, and the underbelly or under tentacles. Each of these are again, very simple pieces, mostly made in half double crochets. And if you've made the octopus squish, which is a stuffed animal that looks an awful lot like the bottom half of this bowl, then you'll know how to make many of these pieces already. So let's get started. So to begin the outer bowl of our Halloween tentacle candy bowl, we're going to use our color A, whatever that color is, and we're going to start with a foundation single crochet. So I've started with a slip knot on my hook and I'm going to go ahead and chain two. So one and two. And then I'm going to insert my hook under that underneath hump, the back hump, if you will, of that first chain I made, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through just that first loop and yarn over and pull through both of those. And that is a foundation single crochet. Then I need to make 75 foundation half double crochets for a total of 76 stitches. So to do those, I'm now going to yarn over before I go under those two loops at the bottom of the previous stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through just that loop. Oops, I pulled through two of them, so I just need to push that one back off and get them sorted here. There we go. Sometimes those bulky yarns wanna come along for the ride. There we go. Now we can yarn over and pull through all three to finish our half double crochet. So let's do one of those one more time. We yarn over, go into the two loops at the bottom of the previous stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, this will become the chain or the two loops at the bottom of this stitch. Yarn over and pull through just that loop to start our half double crochet. We've got our three loops on the hook, so we yarn over and pull through all three to finish. So you want to make a total of 76 stitches for your first round. After you've done that, you simply join, or excuse me, you don't join because we're going to be working in a spiral. So go ahead and make the rest of your stitches and I'll see you when we've got our 76 stitches ready to proceed. Okay, so after you've got your 76 stitches made, you should have a lot longer of a row than this one, but this is just my small one for demonstration. What we need to do now is start to work in the round, but we're not going to join with a slip stitch. Instead, we still want to bend our row here so that our first stitch comes back to meet our last stitch, and we wanna make sure that there's no twist there. But now we're just going to start crocheting right into that first stitch, that foundation single crochet. We're just going to crochet right on into that without a slip stitch or any sort of turning chain or chain up, so to speak. So for round two, we are going to work two half, excuse me, one half double crochet in each stitch around. We're just going to be working even. So we're going to go ahead and yarn over and then we can bring up that single crochet right there and go right into the top of that stitch and complete our half double crochet. Now, when we come back and finish our bowl here, we'll use this tail end to help cinch up that little gap right there and close that on up nicely so that it's more of an invisible seam. But by working in a spiral, we won't have those slip stitches to create a line in our project. So as I say, for round two, you just continue to half double crochet in each stitch around. However, since we are working in a spiral, I strongly recommend that you put a stitch marker in the first stitch of each round here, beginning in round two. Otherwise, because there isn't that slip stitch or that jump up, it's really easy to lose track of exactly where that first stitch is in each round, and you'll end up making too many stitches and sort of ending up with a wonky bowl. So continue 
crocheting half double crochets in each stitch around for round two. And then when you get all the way around, you just do the exact same thing for round three. Just make sure to move that stitch marker up as you continue to grow your bowl. Okay, so after you've made three rounds of half double crochets, each with 76 stitches per round, then you're ready to move on to round four. Now round four is half double crochet in the next 17 stitches, then half double crochet two together, then repeat that on a round. So on my little swatch here, I don't have that many stitches and you know what a half double crochet looks like. So basically you would just go ahead and half double crochet right in that first marked stitch. And of course, always keep moving that stitch marker on up so you don't lose your place. There we go. And then in 16 more, and then you're ready for that first decrease. And the way I like to do my half double crochet two together decreases is actually just by doing a single crochet two together decrease. I find that it looks a little bit more like a finished half double crochet than the half double crochet two together does. So let's go ahead and do it both ways, but you can try which way, whichever, whichever way you like best. So the standard way, the way you're supposed to do it is yarn over, go into the next stitch and pull up a loop yarn over again, go into the next stitch, pull up a loop again, and then yarn over and pull through all those loops to create your decrease. And this is the same way you would decrease any other stitch. Make it all until there's just those couple loops left on the hook and then pull through. But you can see it was a lot bulkier and thicker than these other half double crochets. So I find if you just go ahead and work a single crochet two together, just as you normally would for one of those stitches, now you've got three loops left on that hook, just like you would for a half double crochet. And when you pull, yarn over and pull through, I think that looks a lot more like a finished double crochet, half double crochet than the standard way. But you can try both and do whatever works for you. But if you follow those instructions all the way around for round four, then at the end of that, you'll have a total of 72 stitches. Rounds five and six are much the same. If you follow along with the written instructions, it's just the number of stitches in between the half double crochet decreases that changes. But at the end of round six, you should be down to a total of 56 stitches. At that point, you do not break your yarn. We're going to move on to making the tentacles. So let me pull up what that piece looks like. Here's our outer, outer bowl with the tentacles attached in our finished color. Here was that very first round we made. You can see here, I can't even actually see where it was that I joined up and finished off that round using that tail end, just sew them together. And then after we've worked our way down here through round six, these are our four, five, and six of our decreases, then it's time to add the tentacles. And these tentacles are the exact same ones I used for the octopus squish. So let's go to that footage to see how to make these tentacles. Okay, so on our little swatch here, we're going to say that we've gotten all the way through round 18 and it's time to begin tentacle number one. So of course, we'll beginning that, begin that in the first stitch of the previous round there. So for row one, we're going to half double crochet in the next seven stitches. So we'll go right into that very next one, just as we would have before for when we were working on our spiral. And you can move that stitch marker up if you want to, totally optional at this point. You might want to go ahead and just move it to the next stitch. That'll tell you where to begin the next tentacle if you prefer, or well, after we make this first seven. So there's one, let's see, two, three, four, five. And I can, getting a sort of a cup shape here since I am working evenly on such a small swatch. Oops, let's try that again. And was that six or seven? Let's see, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. All right, so at this point then, since we're just making our first tentacle, you would leave the rest of those unworked and turn. So then we're going to chain one and rows two through four of tentacle number one are just work even. So you just chain one and a half double crochet in each of those seven stitches across. So I'm just half double crocheting right back across for row two, let's see, I've got one, two, three, four, five, so I should have two more, which I do. Lands me right in my marked stitch, so I know I'm in the right stitch there. So I guess would be handy for those first couple rows there, just to let you know. And then, like I say, rounds, or excuse me, rows three and four, you just chain one and half double crochet back and forth again. So let's go ahead and skip to row five. Row five, we chain one, 
work two half double crochets in the first stitch. So here's one, two, and then just half a double crochet in each of the next four stitches. So there's one, two, three, and four. And then there should be two stitches left. So we're going to half double crochet two together there. So I'm going to do it my favorite way where it's more like a single crochet two together. Let's go in the first one, the second one, yarn over and pull through to finish off. Then we're ready for row six. To begin row six, of course, we'll chain one. There we go, get a little bit more yarn going. And we're going to half double crochet two together twice. So let me drop that yarn over, go into the first stitch, pull up that loop, go into the second stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through all those loops. Now I keep wanting to yarn over, but we're going to half double crochet two together again. So over those next two stitches there, then half double crochet in the next two stitches. So one, two, Then we are going to work two half double crochets in the very last stitch. So find that very last stitch. There we go. There is one and two. And that's it for row six. So for row seven of the tentacles, we're going to chain one, work two half double crochets in the first stitch. One, two, half double crochet in the next stitch and then half double crochet two together twice over the last four stitches. So in the first two, we've got our first half double crochet two together. And in the last two, we'll have our last half double crochet two together. There we are, and that's row seven. Let me pull up a little bit more yarn there and we're ready for row eight. I'm gonna chain one and turn here, work our half double crochet two together in the first two stitches. Half double crochet in the next stitch and finish with another half double crochet two together. Like so. Then row nine, chain one, half double crochet in the first stitch, half double crochet two together in the last two stitches. So now we're down to just two stitches for row nine and we're ready for our last row of the tentacle, row 10, where we chain one, half double crochet two together. So just those last two stitches become one. Get under both those loops there at the top of that stitch. There we are. Finish that off. And then you can go ahead and break your yarn. Leave a good six inches or so to weave in that end. And you can just pull that through to finish it off like so. Then we will immediately go to the next tentacle. So I had this one marked as the first stitch of this tentacle. You can see it's got some great curve there. So to make the next tentacle, I would just jump to the next stitch in round 18 of our body here. So just come back here, find that last stitch there, go right into the next one, grab our yarn up again, pull that on through and chain one. There we sure make sure I've got the right end of it there. There we go, chain one. And then we just start the, just as we did before, half double crochet in that stitch and the next six stitches. So you've got a total of seven. So that's two, three, four. Well, you get the idea. It's just half double crocheting across. And after that, all the instructions are the same. So all the tentacles as you go around are identical. Um, but because of the stiffness of the yarn, you can sort of style them together in different ways. So after you've made all eight of the tentacles all the way around the body, each of them starting out seven, inch, uh, seven stitches wide, not seven inches, seven stitches wide, and finishing off with that last one stitch, then it is time to begin the underbody and the under tentacles with our Bernat blanket in white. So to make the underbelly for your Halloween bowl, the tentacle portion that kind of flattens out the bottom of the bowl and holds it up nice, it's basically a very simple spiral circle 
just worked with standard increases. And then the tentacles are the exact same as they are on the top portion of the bowl, except that each one of these rows is worked backwards. So if you follow the written pattern, for instance, if, it's, if it says to increase at the beginning of one end of the row and decrease at the other, for the underside, you'll decrease at the beginning and increase at the other so that when you pair those up together, they should match up. If for some reason you get mixed up on that, all you need to do is make sure your ends are woven in on the other side and you can flip it over and apply it that way. And the final piece for our Halloween tentacle candy bowl is the inner bowl. This is just a simple circular spiral made in half double crochets, working our way out until we then work up even for a few rows. So we increase for eight rows and then work even for three more. And we've got a total of 72 stitches around. You can see here, I did not break the yarn. Well, I did, but I left a little ball of it that I'm going to use next to start assembling our bowl. And now we're ready to start assembling our bowl. I have the outer bowl here and the inner bowl, and I'm just, as you can see, sliding the inner bowl right on into this piece. I just have a stitch marker right there to help me remember that this was the right size, or right side rather, so this is the side that I want facing up. So sometimes you'll notice too, I leave a little bit of my ends still hanging out even after I've woven them in, I don't trim them off. That's always a good visual clue for me too to let me know this goes on the inside of my piece. So basically, to start assembling, we're just going to go ahead and line these up. And it doesn't matter where you begin each piece together, just go ahead and find where you want to begin, doesn't really matter at all, and start lining up your stitches. Now you'll notice we had 76 stitches in the outer and 72 on the inner. That's partially to help it fit inside there so that it's not the same size and the inner doesn't end up too big, but that does mean that in four different stitches as we, com uh, as we connect these, four of these stitches are going to have to be worked into twice because there's four fewer stitches here. So if you'd like, all you need to do is you can take stitch markers or you can visually mark it out if you like and just mark out four points on this inner bowl, approximately equidistant from each other. And when you get to that particular section, just make sure to work into that inner stitch twice. Let's go ahead and take a few stitches here so I can show you what I mean. Okay, now one thing you might notice right away is that I was crocheting this direction on my inner and this direction on my outer. And because this is gonna be the outside of my bowl, I really want the nice finished edge of my stitches to be on this side. So even though I was going this direction on the inner before, I'm just going to go ahead and grab that loop and put it back on my hook. And then I'm just going to go ahead and crochet back in the other direction. When we go ahead and join up after that last stitch, it shouldn't be a problem at all. So let me pull that little hair of mine out of the way here. There we go. And I'm just going to go ahead and pick a stitch, any stitch at all, it doesn't matter. And I'm going to go through the outer layer. And then I want to make sure to go through that first stitch there of the inner and then yarn over and pull that loop on through both. And then I can simply single crochet those right together. So like I said, for the most part, you're going to be working even. You just wanna make sure to match up those stitches as you go but at four different points that you'll want to spread out around the bowl, you will need to work into that inner, uh, into the same stitch twice. So let's say we've come to one of those marked stitches. Let me finish off that one here. And let's say right here, this next marked inner stitch is the one where I'm going to need to work into twice. All we need to do is go into the next stitch of your outer and that stitch of the inner go ahead and make your single crochet just as you normally would. Then go to the next stitch of the outer and go right back to that same stitch of the inner. Might have to just kind of pull it over there, give it a little tug. But you just go ahead and make your single crochet right in there. And you can see from the outside, it doesn't look different at all. From the inside with this fuzzy yarn, you can barely tell. And even if you could tell, well, heck, that's what you're supposed to be doing. So we're just going to single crochet through both of those layers all the way around the top of this bowl. When we get to the end, we can cut our yarn, join, and sew in that end nicely. Then it's time to apply the underbelly. So now I've flipped the whole thing upside down. You can see the underside of my inner bowl here, and you can see the underside of my tentacles. I've even got a couple of little ends still sticking out there. So now we're gonna take that underbelly we made, and we just wanna lay it right down on top and match it up with those tentacles. 
And hopefully, if you reverse those stitches the right way, then they should match up just right. If they didn't, try flipping it over and see if that works well too. Just make sure you've got those ends tucked in. So once you've got those all matched up, then just as we did the top, we're just going to single crochet through both of those layers. For this one, I like to do it from this side, from the blue side again, or the outer side, whatever your color is, since that's the side of the bowl that's going to show. And then for this, I would be using the blue yarn to seam up this section as well just to keep that consistent over here. And then when it's all done, you can fill it up with candy and get it sitting all pretty. One thing to note, if you do want to add details like tentacle suckers with buttons or any sort of fancy eyes or any sort of other ways you might wanna dress up your candy bowl, definitely personalize it and have fun with it, but go ahead and add those buttons and things before you do this assembly step. It's just a lot easier to weave in those ends and tie off all those knots before you do the final assembly. And here you can see our finished candy bowl. I have seamed together the inner bowl and outer bowl with the white. And as you can see, I just worked around with single crochet with the blue to connect the tentacles. So you can see our finished under underbelly right there. And all our tentacles are curling up in fun and different ways. One note about this, when you're doing that single crochet seaming around the outside of the tentacles, don't worry too much about getting each tentacle identical. You want each one to curl up and be unique and have some fun of its own. And doing the stitches just a little bit differently will help make that happen. And that's how to crochet the Halloween Tentacle Candy Bowl, which is a free pattern you'll find on mooglyblog.com. Please go to the link in the description for both of those right and left-handed video tutorials, as well as the link to the written pattern, which you'll need to complete this, as well as links to all the other supplies that you've seen here today. Thanks so much for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Mm -hmm.